Hello and welcome to iBuzz. I'm your host, Nosheen Bukhari, bringing you some exciting news from entertainment world. In today's episode, we will be reviewing Army of the Dead and it becoming the top 10 most viewed Netflix movies, followed by a movie review from 2006, The Fountain. First things first, let me quickly take you to the top stories of the day. Army of the Dead marching towards Netflix 10 most watched movies. Ed Sheeran and Coldplay to headline Radio 1's Big Weekend. Black Adam producer confirms key details about The Rock's superhero suit. Lady Gaga, BTS, Bieber slashed from Friends reunion in China. Billie Eilish announces cities, dates for 2022 Happier Than Ever World Tour. And now moving to the top story of the day. Netflix has another feature hit on its hands in Zack Snyder's Army of the Dead, which is on its way to becoming one of the streamer's top 10 most watched movies, bound to notch 72 million viewing households in its first four weeks. To discuss this further, we have entertainment journalist James Barker with us. James, welcome to the show. Great, thanks for having me on. Thanks for having me on board. So, James, Army of the, the Dead viewership is strong, but uh, uh, the critics has sa have said that it cannot, you know, top Extraction, which is Netflix's top ten biggest film that ha that has ever been viewed. Now, what's your take on that? Uh, um, well, I mean, it seems to be it seems to be a pretty popular movie, as you, as you mentioned, and um, there's lots of very popular sort of horror movies on Netflix. It seems to be uh, a lot of the time the top the, the top movies in the top ten are the are horror and thriller movies. So, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't be so sure about that. But um, on the other hand, they don't have the same kind of star power as, as Extraction, mm. uh, which had uh, Chris Chris Hemsworth. Um, right. So, hard to say really at this point. I would I would say. Right. Talking about the story of Army of the Dead, it gives a feel of the blending uh, of Walking Dead with Suicide Squad together. Do you think the story had that typical DC touch without any innovation? I mean, when you describe it like that, you make it sound terrible. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think, I mean, I, I would say um, the zombie movie genre is somewhat uh, oversaturated. There's, there's, mm. if, you, if you don't believe me, just check the Netflix horror category. So yeah. there's there's lots of different movies. It's very hard to make a, diff a zombie movie which is very original at mm -hmm. this point, I think. But when we um, when we talk about something that is coming from mainstream, they have like higher expectations. So don't you think that there could have been something different? I mean, I had I had sort of mixed feelings about the movie. I would mm -hmm. say. I mean, I, I don't think it's 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 not it's certainly not a classic by any means. Mm -hmm. um, I did quite like a lot of the action. I thought there was some fun aspects to it. Mm -hmm. um, I liked some of the things they did with the different species of zombies. So there's some which mm -hmm. are some which are the traditional ones, and some which are smart and fast. So that makes them a bit more a bit more threatening. Mm -hmm. And you know you have the zombie tiger and the zombie horses and stuff as well, which is also also quite fun. Mm -hmm. um, I I think um, I, f I felt like uh, the ending was a bit over the top and a bit depressing, even for a zombie film. And some of the it, it is is essentially a remake of Aliens in, in many ways, and mm -hmm. some of the characters, uh, some of the plot twists are really telegraphed. So there's a couple of characters. Um, I, I don't want to give too many spoilers, but there's mm -hmm. there's in, in traditional traditionally in zombie movies, there's a character who betrays the group, and you can tell straight away who that character is going to be yeah. in this. So yeah, very cliche, right? James, fans also have complained about compromised camera work, where it, at many points it went blurred, leaving the viewers irritated to find the cause. Uh, did you also feel feel that way? Um, personally, I didn't, but I, I I understand there's been a lot of complaints about that, and even about I think there were dead pixels and from yeah. one of the cameras they were using. So um, maybe my TV just isn't isn't good enough mm -hmm. to uh, to really uh, to really notice that. But mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of some of that was sort of like what Zack Snyder was stylistically dis trying to do. So he was trying to create the sort of claustrophobic feel from what I, when I what I've read. Um, mm -hmm. By having these the, using these older cameras, which only they sort of don't they, they don't think make things very clear from mm -hmm. except if it's in close range. 
Um, but yeah, I think a lot of people didn't really like that style. Um, so yeah, it seems to be have been not fully successful. Right. What he was trying to do. Right. And James, according to Zack Snyder's extravagant new zombie film out on Netflix, is an overload and overwhelming affair that reduces Homa Kureshi to a damsel in distress. So, what do you think of her character? I mean, do you think that it was left unanswered because they're trying to plan a sequel for the movie? I mean, they do. They do seem to. They, they've already. They planned already several spin-offs, I believe. So they've already shot a, a prequel and um, an anime-style um, uh, sort of spin-off TV series. So yeah, I think there was there was definitely elements of that. As you say, it's a bit. It's a bit. There's a bit. There's a bit of a Suicide Squad aspect to it. I mean, I would say I would say of the characters in general, they some of them are a bit flat. Uh, I mean, even uh, Dave Batista, who was who's kind of the main character, was was like a little. Um, um, I, I think his, his, he had gave kind of an un, unenthusiastic performance, particularly compared to Guardians of the Galaxy, which he's really really mm. good in. So, um, uh, so yeah, I would I would agree with I agree with that criticism really. Right. And uh, some of the very interesting characters, like Chambers, Dieter, they were killed in the movie who could have kept the element of interest in the story alive. Don't you think that they, they, they ended, their character ended pretty early while a viewer was trying to build their connection with them? Yeah, I do, I do think uh, they, 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 they did kind of... Um, and again, this is partly, this is partly due to the, the plot twist being kind of telegraphed. So. Um, yeah, so one of the characters, one of the characters, is sort of betrayed early on, and is left in left in the the room full of zombies, essentially, isn't isn't she? So, so yeah, I mean, I think I feel like they, that could have been done in a better way, and in, in general, I would say there could have been more character character development in the movie. Um, okay. There's a really, f I think Zack Snyder is really good at introducing. He he does lots of these fun sort of montages. I mean, the, the mm. best part of the movie really is the introductory montage, which introduces all the characters, mm. but then you don't really get that much more about them, I think, later in the movie. I mean, or what you do get is quite sort of stereotypical. Right. Uh, and there is a plus to this movie that we have seen a lot of new faces other than Dave Bautista. The rest of the cast isn't that very famous. So um, do you think this, this, this was a great move by Zack Snyder uh, introducing new faces in a blockbuster movie, which was expected to be a blockbuster uh, like Army of the Dead? Well, I think um, sort of the breakout, the breakout star of the, of the movie is kind of the helicopter pilot. Um, I, I forget, I forget the actress's actress's name. I'm, I'm afraid, but uh, but yeah, she was really good in it, and I think she's she's mainly mainly known for for not for acting. So she's she's I think she's a stand-up comedian. So yeah, I mean, it, it did introduce some interesting new faces, I think, to the uh, to mm -hmm. well the the movie, and you can you can definitely say that in its favor that, it, that it's it's good in that sense. Right. Uh, while watching Army of the Dead, one cannot get a clear idea for the movie having Zack Snyder touch. Do you agree or disagree in either case, and why? I mean, as I say, I think some some elements are very Zack Snyder. So he does. Mm. He, I mean, he does a lot of these these sort of montages, and uh, I mean, uh, the, the the beginning really reminds me of the, the Watchmen movie, where you have the montage of. of which shows shows mm -hmm. the the events which led up to the, the Watchmen movie. Uh, mm -hmm. So he does something very similar similar there. Um, yeah, and the kind of the cinematography and the style is is is, is very Zack Snyder, I would I would say. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it, it's much less. Um, uh, his his recent movies, like his superhero movies, are kind of like um, very over the top and sort of um, I want to say pompous, kind of. Mm -hmm. And it's, 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 it's interesting to see him kind of having a more fun movie with Army of the Dead, which is much more kind of, it doesn't take itself very seriously and it's sort of semi-comedic. Mm -hmm. So I think that was, that was, that was interesting. And it's, it, that's one of the things I liked about the movie, that it wasn't right. as over the top as his superhero films. Right, and James talking about the story, the elements seem to be snatched from here and there. Like I you know, mentioned in the beginning that it was a blend of Suicide Squad and The Walking Dead. And when we, look into the mission that the, the team was given. Again, it gives a touch of money heist. And then we see the, the, yep. the zombie animals, which probably is an adaptation of characters from, uh, 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 you know, Jon Snow's um, legendary uh, Game of Thrones. So critics yep. are like, they're, they're very much disappointed in the story itself. So do you think that there is more room and more space 
uh, for the team to build the sequel in a better way and be, you know, less disappointing for the fans? I mean, I'd be interested to see more of the backstory of some of what, what happened in the movie, because we had the sort of zombie king or the, 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 the super intelligent zombie, and it's never really explained uh, where where he comes from or what his plan is. Hmm. Um, so that's something that's something you could certainly explore in a, in, a, in a sequel. Although, I mean, the ending of the movie kind of makes that makes it difficult to explore anything uh, which happened in Las Vegas, I think. But um, uh, yeah, I think uh, there's, there's there's definitely aspects you could kind of develop further. Um, unfortunately, I think, well, I mean, um, as far as the original cast goes, it's it's, it's somewhat hard mm -hmm. to, to develop develop the characters further after after this movie. So. Yeah, I think that's, that might be one of the reasons why they're doing a prequel. I mean, I think what people are really interested in seeing is maybe, uh, at least from the people I've talked to, is, is what happened in Las Vegas and how the whole um, mm. situation there went down and how we ended up in how we ended up with the, where we were at the beginning of the movie. So I think that's, that's, there's a good reason for them to, to kind of go, go back in time rather than forward in time. Um, there, there's, mm. there's definitely a plot hook set up for a, a, a sequel. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't think it's as interesting as, as the backstory to this movie. Right, and James Hall, how would you rate the movie uh, keeping the viewership of Army of the Dead in mind? Um, I would overall, I would give it a mixed review. I mean, it's not mm -hmm. bad, but it's not great. It's not really an innovative movie. Mm -hmm. And the zombie movie, the, there's lots of different, there's, there's lots of zombie movies av available. It's a very, um, mm -hmm. a very, well-filled genre there's mm -hmm. like the, there's you know the, the, you're not going to be seeing much much new in this movie but i did like i mean i liked uh the sort of light-hearted atmosphere um i liked um i liked some of the action um i like some i like some of the characters although some of them weren't mm -hmm. very well well developed and i liked the kind of the, the way the zombie threat was was slightly different to what we used to so again more intelligent and fast zombies and kind of the the hierarchy of zombies, uh, which I thought was quite interesting. Um, so yeah, I mean, I would, yeah, I would give it a mixed review. I mean, mm -hmm. I, uh, three stars, let's say. Right, right. So probably we can expect some mistakes to be fixed in the next sequel and we can wait for Zach to, you know, make us less disappointing. James, thank you very much indeed. It was a pleasure having you on board. Yeah, thanks very much. That was James Barker discussing Army of the Dead. And now moving to other story details of the day. Ed Sheeran, Coldplay and AJ Tracy are among the artists taking to the stage at Radio 1's big weekend this bank holiday. After the event was cancelled last year due to the pandemic, this year's event is taking place from May 28th to May 31st with over 100 live performances for fans to enjoy across the weekend. There are no live audience but the public is able to watch all the action online. Five performances were filmed on location across the UK in front of iconic backdrops and were shown this weekend. Dwayne Johnson's fellow bodybuilder and producer Danny Garcia in an interview managed to drop a few details about her ex-husband's upcoming superhero film which she is producing alongside. While discussing the movie, she spoke to whether or not the star would have been padding in his superhero costume when he appears on screen as Black Adam. Danny told that if fans didn't think it was possible for Duane to get more jacked, they'd be mistaken because he did indeed get even more in shape to play Black Adam. So apparently the payoff was that he actually now has the physique of the comic book character, meaning his suit isn't doing much work in helping him embody the physicality of the role. Chinese fans of the popular sitcom Friends were furious after censors cut guest stars Lady Gaga, Justin Bieber and Korean boy band BTS from the much-awaited reunion episode. When the one-off special of the beloved 1990s sitcom was streamed on three Chinese video platforms, cameos by the celebrities were removed from all versions. Lady Gaga was banned from touring China in 2016 after she met with the exiled Tibetan spiritual leader Dalai Lama who has been labeled as a separatist by the Beijing government. Bieber has been blocked since 2014 when he posted a photo of himself at the controversial shrine in Tokyo that honors Japan's war dead, including convicted war criminals from World War II. 
Boy band BTS angered the party last year when they omitted any reference to Chinese fighters who died during the Korean War when speaking about the history of pain in the region. Chinese streaming services and video did not answer AFP queries about what prompted the censorship. Grammy Award-winning singer and songwriter Billie Eilish recently returned to social media and announced the official dates and cities on her upcoming 2022 world tour titled Happier Than Ever. The official list was announced shortly after tickets were on sale and it all began from June 3rd all the way into July 2nd. The UK special feature stops in one of Britain's well-known cities including Belfast, Dublin, London, Manchester, Glasgow, Amsterdam, Frankfurt, Berlin, and Paris. And that is it from our newsroom. We will be right back after a quick short break. Stay tuned to find out more. Welcome back to our next segment in which we will review the 2006 movie, The Fountain. A story of three people living in different centuries embark on a search for the tree of life in order to protect their loved ones and receive the gift of immortality. With brilliant cast like Hugh Jackman and Rachel Wise, the movie could unfortunately make only $16 million in box office. Joining us from India to review the movie, Ananya Ghosh, who is a film journalist. Ananya, welcome to the show. Hi, hi. So, uh, such a mind-bending and twisted story. Did you find the concept challenging for a regular movie fan? Absolutely. Like, there are movies that you don't understand at first mm -hmm. go. Like, you have to watch and re-watch. And, like, the first time I remember when I watched it, mm -hmm. I was like, I have no clue what just happened. <laughs> so, so right. it required me a second watch. And to really decode like what is happening like you know mm -hmm. it's, it's such a complex and such a delicious movie like you know mm -hmm. it's something that you can savor later on like it's not like you watch it and it's over it's something yeah. that stays within you and it grows within you so right. i love those kind of movies so so yeah, yeah it was absolutely a treat right and the strength and also very difficult to... exactly the strength of the relationship between tommy and isabel has yet another story of its own where Tommy being a doctor, a warrior in each character, he's shown weak due to his emotions, whereas Isabel, who is about to die, seems to be very strong in holding and collecting Tommy wherever she sees him falling. Right. And also, I think, like, uh, you know, the way the light is presented in the movie, like, you know, you always have Rachel in, in this light, uh, white mm -hmm. light. And yeah. Tommy is always in that, you know, his journey is mm -hmm. from darkness to light. So when you have the first story, it's like pretty much shot in a dark setup. Mm -hmm. And then he comes to light, light in the last segment of it when he is the time traveler. So mm -hmm. I found it pretty interesting. And uh, he's not a person to make love stories per se, but this is just such a beautiful love story, how it transcends time and also it's more about uh, life and death and the yeah. and how in the quest of immortality you miss out living your life basically mm -hmm. i mean at the end of the day he realizes that he should have spent more time with the wife rather than trying to elongate her lifespan so mm -hmm. i found that part pretty touching like which happens to maybe all of us you know when we are trying to find something in pursuit of something we lose out on the small joys of life. So mm. I think that's that love story brings that to core. Like, yeah, how you need to love in that moment and not look at something mm. which is perfect. Mm -hmm. Also, so, Ananya, can we yeah. talk about the special effects in the movie, which were you know used by by using micro photography of chemical reactions on yes. tiny petri dishes uh, by the by the filmmaker Darren yes. Aronofsky. Yes, so uh, the story goes that the budget was slashed so bad mm -hmm. that they didn't have the money to do it. And also the fact that he wanted to, like this was his reaction to the science fiction genre, like which you would see a lot of like, it has some cliche tropes, right? Like mm -hmm. you have a spaceship and all those things happening and everything mm -hmm. is digitally done, like computerized graphics. So it was his reaction to that. And 
also i was like i i think it's, it was a cinematographer or the editor who said that it was a blessing in disguise like you know when the budget got slashed they devised these uh, techniques mm-hmm. to make do with something which looks so beautiful like mm-hmm. just imagine like of course when we have done our science projects etc we have yeah. seen things through the microscope and how beautiful random trivial things can look hmm. but to use it as the mainstay or the main exactly. component of a science fiction that's a work of art i think that idea itself is brilliant i think it's just hmm. amazing mind blowing hmm. and the filmmaker has so, said that yeah. ci would take away from the timelessness of the film and that he wants the film to stand yes. the test of time yeah it's just so it just goes so well with the theme itself like you know it is about timelessness and he created something mm-hmm. out of such ordinary things that it became one so yeah. it will never get dated like it will not seem jaded like the technology will not evolve from there hmm. because it's just micro photography it's not exactly. like some technique used otherwise exactly yeah. and talking about method acting of the 70 extra casts um as mayan warriors 20 were actual mayans who you know flew all the way from guatemala to act in the movie right right and i and i also think that you know that was supposed to be a much elaborate sequence or su- mm-hmm. a much elaborate part of the movie but because of the budget cut mm-hmm. they had to like make do with like it was supposed to be a, an elaborate scene with a proper war happening etc hmm. but they made made it into one person against so many which goes with the theme of course but it was hmm. something that was improvised and stuff but i think it it looks very authentic of course it looks very authentic right and what better than to get actual people do those and i hmm. i also think that you jackman was just amazing in this movie i think if you uh look at eternal spot uh, eternal sunshine mm-hmm. as jim carrey's seminal work yeah this is huge acknowledgments which didn't get that kind of recognition of course yeah. but he is just so not the kind of an actor we perceive him as usually exactly so i just found it just amazing yeah exactly and ananya can we talk about the mesmerizing the captivating music of the entire movie I mean uh, what what were your thoughts initial thoughts when you started listening to the mu- to, to the music the background music Right I mean uh, I was li- like I heard it somewhere that the idea itself came from David Bowie's that song that uh, Space Odyssey mm-hmm. So uh, how he was visualizing the song basically that is how it started so it made sense that the movie itself had such an amazing soundtrack in itself Mm-hmm. and also it's it is very different from what you would see in other movies of his like it's it's very uh, it has a very spiritual side to it and yes. it's never overpowering it's not like it's ne- it never gets in the way like you mm-hmm. don't even realize that it has a soundtrack like you know exactly it's just so well done and you know like i i had like once uh, read this that uh, so uh, i think it was uh, Kiarostami who had said that a good movie is that movie when nothing sticks out hmm. like you know it's not like you remember the soundtrack only hmm. you remember the movie as an as a as a whole i hmm. think that was brilliantly in this one like you don't remember that the microbes were used for, used for the special effects you yeah. don't remember that oh it had a great soundtrack you just remember it as an experience as like something that you maybe didn't understand in the mm-hmm. at the first go but it's such a beautiful movie in general mm-hmm. everything just falls in place right right and ananya yeah. unfortunately the movie could not make much on box office a total of 35 million dollars was spent on the making but only 16 million dollars were returned so in yeah. your opinion what could be the the possible reason that could not attract the movie goers i think it also had to do with the uh, studio because they didn't market it well and mm-hmm. also it took so long it was this brad pitt was supposed to do it yes. he left and then they didn't they couldn't get the right people for the mm-hmm. cast and it was past last minute mm-hmm. so i think nobody expected anything out of it and also it is the way things are like we don't usually go to watch a movie to think or ponder about it right it's mostly I have heard reviews where people have said that oh but this could be done in a very linear way in a much mm-hmm. simpler way but the point is that is the beauty of art like mm-hmm. you know it's, exactly i can say something like you know 
you don't need poetry to say i love you right so yeah. it can be just said like that so what's the point of having poetry mm-hmm. like you know so that way though there would have been no pablo nerida no shakespeare no, nobody like if things were just said mm-hmm. like that i think that was something because it's a difficult movie so mm-hmm. it's not something that would work right away at the box office in general mm-hmm. and also i think all his movies like you know his movies are difficult and i had actually interviewed him where he said that he mm-hmm. sees no barrier between a box office hit and an artistic expression mm-hmm. but that's the director's perspective but mm-hmm. as an audience it might not be accessible to everybody like mother like you know yeah most people didn't like it because they didn't get it at first mm-hmm. so i think that's right. the problem or that's the beauty of his movies mm-hmm. that it won't be a box office success maybe like these kind mm-hmm. of movies don't so right, i right. think that's also right. one of the Right. Ananya, thank you very much indeed for having this discussion. Thanks so much. Thanks so much. That was Ananya discussing and reviewing the 2006 movie The Fountain. And that is it from today's episode. We hope you liked it. Don't forget to share your feedback on the social media link mentioned down below. We will be back with some more exciting news. Until then, take care and goodbye.